What up, IG peeps? We're talking tight hips and my favorite hip openers. We got this request from one of our Inner Circle members. Uh, she's been traveling a lot this week, sitting in an airplane, uh, in conference meetings, not getting a lot of walking and dynamic movement in. And admittedly, if I have to travel a lot or I'm stuck somewhere where I'm in a seated position for multiple hours, I will try to get up every hour just to move the body, but sometimes it just it isn't possible. Uh, so these are the favorite moves I go through to let my hips open up. I typically run through this uh, kind of flow probably two or three times a week, but again, if I notice something is really bugging me, I'll ramp it up. And I would suggest you to do the same, spend more time where you find spots that are tight and troubled. So the first thing we'll do um, is just a basic uh, hip flow opener, uh, almost like a 90-90 flow. I'm gonna do it a little bit regress, so for you at home, anybody can follow this. I'm gonna show the easiest version. So if you find the hips are tight, take the feet, maybe about shoulder width apart, give or take. Hands can be behind the body. All you're gonna do is just rotate the hips and pull down. So again, posture-wise, got a nice strong chest. I'm nice and aligned from basically my hip to my shoulders. And again, all I'm trying to do is drive this leg into the floor and drive this one as well. For most of you, this is probably the range of motion you're starting at. And if it's tight, you might feel some restriction inside the hips and groin. Some of you guys might even be towards the hip. And again, all I'm gonna do is just floss from left to right. And this is very basic at first. For most of you, this is probably where you'll start at. At some point, when you guys start to rotate, if you have bigger ranges of motion, you guys might start flossing and going through either bigger ranges, it just depends. But again, start slow, spend the time where you have to, really just finding what bothers you. Now, if you can own the pattern, we'll be here, feet about shoulder width apart. I'll take it freestanding, and that's where I really feel the biggest difference. So for me, not too bad, that left side's easy. Usually the right side is a little bit tighter, and I'll feel that as I go through the transition. And I just keep flossing, seeing what feels good, what feels tight, if there is restriction through space. I know this looks very simple and basic. For a lot of you at home, this is, is more advanced than you probably can imagine. Those ones are simple. I do also like if you have an Airx pad, if you guys are in a hotel room, a pillow, something super basic. All we're doing in a half kneeling position, my legs extended, all I'm gonna do is just let my hips drop, almost letting my butt come sit back onto my foot, just let the hips open up. Now once I'm here, I can rotate, give it a little reach, a little bit of a stretch. I can walk my hands up to about where push-up position would be. And I can almost come down and even like mimic a push-up, letting the hips drop. Again, flossing it back, walking through space, seeing what feels good to me, what feels tight. For me, typically, when I come down to the open position from the push-up, usually that left hip and groin gets a stretch. Same thing when I come down, I pop in that right side. Again, the hamstrings are tight for some of you. It's a nice little added benefit as well. And again, just flossing, clearly working both sides as you guys go through. Now, another simple one I like to do, uh, if you guys have access to a minivan, same concept. It's a stretch, but also a mobility drill. I simply anchor the foot in. I'm gonna pull it back. We're talking right hip, right groin here, just to get a stretch. Full pull up top, and then taking the hands, across the band, letting it drop down towards the floor. For a lot of you guys, this is a big enough stretch. And then again, if we want to turn it into a mobility drill, I can just basically go a little extension here. And again, mine is actually a little bit tight today. A ton of lunching yesterday. Uh, I can feel it open up and stretch. So again, it doesn't got to be done super quick. Spend, you know, one, two, three minutes here, whatever you can handle, and obviously work through both sides, right to left, see if you notice any imbalances or you have any differences between the two. Uh, other than the band, if you have access to a wall, which if you're in a room, you have access to a wall. All we're gonna have you come up and do is almost like a mimic, uh, like what a squat stance would be, uh, and almost like our version of the splits on the wall. So again, you guys can get super close, maybe six to 10 inches, give or take. I'm gonna rotate the body up, stick my butt as close to the wall as I can, Start in that vertical position, and then again, just literally slowly let the legs just drop. And all you have to do is just be here. Literally just hang out and let it actively stretch. For a lot of you, uh, obviously we're talking hips, we're also talking groin as well. This is one of my favorite stretches. Again, if you're gonna use social media, this is the time and place to do it. The neck's in a safe posture and position. You can't really round it, and you just hang out. And naturally what's gonna happen over the course of seconds is your legs are gonna naturally just kinda sink down deeper and deeper and deeper again. You don't have to flex, you can literally just relax and let it be here. Spend two, three, four, five minutes here doing your social media posts, uh, just zoning out. You know, If you can fall asleep here, uh, more power to you. Also from this position I like, if I scoop my butt maybe an extra six inches from the wall, 
I almost kind of like assume the squat position. Once I'm here, I'm just gonna keep the, the feet pressed flat and just pushing, obviously against like my BMO, kind of the inside of the knees, and just driving it, letting the groin and hips kind of stretch and open up. And I'll do a little bit of flossing and flow here so you can let it relax for a second. You can push on it for a split second, I let it relax, or I can actually rotate from here, and let my, my slip's a little bit tight today. I can actually let it drop towards the floor as I rotate again. There is no right or wrong answer. It's just you flossing and finding what works best for you and what you think feels good uh, to you guys letting things open up and just pressing. And if you make that kind of that stink face like somebody farted in the room, uh, you'll know you're doing it right because it, it it's doing its job. I also do like that same variation if you guys can go from the floor. So if you set up in a nice wide stance, same as we had on the Eric's pad, you guys just letting the hips sink, drop in nice and wide, letting the butt and glutes almost come down to the heels. You guys are stretching the hands, sinking in here, uh, letting it hang out for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds. If you can do like a minute, minute or two, and I also like to rotate forward, almost like a frogger leap. So same thing, hands about push-up position. Again, if your groin and hips are tight, this is gonna be a really good stretch for you. Also, let the body kind of fall naturally forward as the hips open up into that push-up position. And then again, just flossing back and forth. So mine is really tight back here. Good thing I'm going through it today. Uh, again, you guys going through maybe 10, 15 repetitions, spending more time as you need to. As I shift the hips from right to left, you're gonna feel it kind of open up each way. Um, we could go shin boxes and a handful of other drills. Uh, I'll do one more for you guys just to show. If you have access to a TRX, I do think this is great as you come down. Uh, and again, I'm a huge fan of just finding things that feel good for your body. So if you guys can come down to that kind of deep squat stance, again, obviously if the hips are tight, um, if you can do just the normal Buddha squat either against the wall, if you have access to this in a TRX, for a lot of you this is great. Working on the posture, letting the hips kind of open up, just sinking here. Most of you sitting here for a minute or two uh, is gonna do wonders for the hips. But if we can, once it's here, we can mess with the foot place. We can let the feet go closer. We can let the feet go wider. We can drop the knee. And now we're just kind of flossing, doing a little joint juicing to see what feels good if we have restrictions. And just getting the body used to moving in ways that it should. Uh, but again, if you guys are trapped somewhere in places, one of the most basic things you can do, especially if you, as we talk, like in that squat or kind of, you know, split position on the wall, just doing a nice deep Buddha squat, seeing into the wall can do a lot for the body. And again, you guys can push against it. You can sit here, but again, if I'm on social media, just hanging out watching TV, uh, this is something so simple and so basic. If you do have tight hips and the groin is tight, just by being here in this position, owning it for a handful of minutes a day, um, you'll feel a lot better uh, than you do right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these. Uh, any other questions, shoot me a message, tell me below if you try them. I uh, will throw this on the YouTube page as well. But again, if you travel a lot, sit at a desk, you have tight hips, you can throw any of these in, especially this current, you know, kind of wall, deep kind of Buddha squat that I'm doing. Because again, I can talk to you, it's not painful. And obviously, I'm at that stage in my life. If you guys find this painful, give it a try, 30 seconds to a minute, see what it does for you, and let me know.